Siberia is the biggest territory in Russia, taking up an incredible 13,100,000 square kilometers. That's more than 75% of the entire nation. Despite this, it only has around half the population of the UK. Given this, that Siberia has long been home to some of the most remarkable creatures in the world, from the woolly mammoths of the prehistoric era to the magnificent Amur tigers that still roam its forests. If you're planning your own Siberian excursion, keep a watch out for these eight fascinating animals which are revealed in the video. Sit back and relax as we present you some of the rarest and most exotic wild animals of Siberia. But before moving further, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon for more amazing content like this. Without further ado, let's get started. Number 1. The Amur Tiger The Amur Tiger, the monarch of Siberian animals, is a lone creature buried deep inside the birch woods and woodlands of central Siberia. There were reportedly only 40 Amur Tigers left in the 1940s due to repeated near-extinction hunts. Since protective measures have been put in place for these magnificent animals over the past few decades, Russia has given the species full protection which has led to a significant increase in population. Amur tigers have been reported to reach lengths of up to 10 feet and astonishing weights of 300 kilograms. Following World War II, Russia was the first nation to outlaw tiger hunting and provide tigers with complete protection. Boar and deer, the two principal prey species, have annual quotas that are determined by the result of population counts. Due to the lack of a market for tiger skins and other products, tigers were relatively less frequently poached, although hunters occasionally killed their competitor when the chance presented itself. One of the biggest tiger subspecies is the Amur tiger. Males typically weigh 160 to 190 kilos, whereas females average around 110 to 130 kilos. The width of a male's paw pad ranges from 10.5 to 14.5 centimeters, that of a female's from 8.5 to 9.5 centimeters, and that of a cub ranges from 5.5 to 10 centimeters. The Amur tiger's coat is a brighter shade of orange than that of other tiger subspecies, and it gets even lighter during the winter. They have longer, thicker coats than other subpopulations because of the cooler climate. To protect them from the cold, they also have thick manes around their neck and extra fur around their paws. Number 2. Eurasian Lynx The Eurasian Lynx is a majestic and strong predator known to roam the forest steppes and is recognized for its capacity to adapt to its environment. In temperate climates, this lynx has been observed to slowly transition from a short reddish-brown coat to a long, silky, grayish coat in the winter. In many regions of Europe and Scandinavia during the 19th and 20th centuries, hunting nearly wiped out the lynx population. population. However, the Eurasian lynx today is regarded as one of the few big cats with a stable population, with an estimated 10,000 individuals living in the wild. Their underparts are typically white and their ground color ranges from yellowish-gray to grayish-brown. The velvety thick pelage, which can be variously patterned with more or less prominent dark patches and occasionally little stripes, is thickest on the back of the animal. Animals in the north are typically less marked and grayer than those in the south. Scandinavians refer to cats with spots as a cat lynx, whereas those without spots are referred to as a wolf lynx. Dark patches on summer clothing typically disappear completely in winter. The face is framed by a noticeable ruff of long hair, large, pointy ears that are 4 to 5 centimeters tall, upright tufts of dark hair on the tips. The back of the ears have a pale center, patches are black towards the tips. Irises have round pupils and a yellowish-brown to greenish color to them. Their body is slanted forward due to their long legs, with the rear limbs being longer than the front ones. For walking on snow, the foot pads are wide and well furred and the short tail has a black tip. Number 3. East Siberian Brown Bear 
greater than the Eurasian brown bears but smaller than the Kamchatka brown bears with long, dense fur that is typically dark but can range from light brown to dark brown. The upper Yenisei River population of bears, which give them their Latin name, have white collars. The world's largest black bear population is found in Russia. Despite being numerous, East Siberian brown bears are still largely regarded as game animals, which makes them endangered. There are over 16,000 bears in the East Siberian taiga and over 5,000 in the Altai Mountains, unknown population numbers in other areas. The East Siberian brown bear is one of the several species of brown bear that lives in Siberia and its surrounding areas. It may be identified by its two traits, the size of its head and its lack of interest in honey. The bear is reputed to kill anything from mountain hares to moose and is thought to be bolder than its contemporaries. Bears make winter dens, which they normally stay in from October or November until the end of March, the beginning of April, or the beginning of May. The cubs, generally two or three, are born in the den in January or February after mating occurs between May and July. For almost two and a half years after their mother gives birth, she will not become pregnant again. The bears live alone, save for when they are mating and when they are mothers with pups. Known to raid food shelters and caches kept by hunters, although there is a lack of information regarding their diets, brown bears generally eat a wide variety of plants, seeds, nuts, fruits, roots, and tubers, as well as small mammals, carrion, and fish. Number 4. Amur Leopard with only about a hundred left in the wild, the Amur leopard is now a rare sight even in its native Siberia, making it the most endangered of all large cats in Russia and possibly the entire globe. Since they have substantially greater body size, thicker coats to cope with the winter conditions and distinctive thicker patterning, they may be identified from other subspecies of leopard. Amur leopards are solitary, effective nighttime predators. The WWF and other Russian organizations are working to safeguard the Amur Leopard. Visit their website to learn more about how you can contribute. The Amur Leopard is a nocturnal species that spends its time alone, hunting mostly in China's and Russia's enormous woods. The hairs on its distinctive coat can become up to 7 centimeters long during the severe winter. Few people ever get to observe an Amur Leopard in its natural habitat. Not surprisingly given their rarity, but unfortunate nonetheless given how stunning they are. They have enormous fuzzy tails they can wrap around themselves for warmth and lush coats with black rings. The good news is that after being pushed to the brink of extinction, their numbers now seem to be increasing as a result of conservation efforts. We are also better able to survey more regions and use video traps to track population changes than we were in the past. Amur leopards are the top predators in their habitat, making them essential for maintaining a healthy species balance. The condition of the surrounding environment, which supplies local wildlife and residents with food, water, and other resources, is likewise impacted by this. By safeguarding the Amur leopard, we contribute to maintaining its ecosystem for the benefit of nearby humans and other animals. Number 5. Siberian Husky the Siberian Husky is now a well-liked pet all over the world and is easily recognized by its thick fur, wolf-like features, and distinctive markings. Siberian Huskies were developed by the Chukchi people of the northeast of Russia for sled pulling, which is today a popular tourist destination. They are excellent working dogs and wonderful companions because they can flourish in the hardest winter climates. The Siberian Husky is an elegant dog that reaches 20 to 24 inches height, height at the withers and weighs 35 to 60 pounds. It has upright ears and dense silky hair. Its typical colorations are gray, brown, black, and white, and it occasionally sports head patterns that resemble a cap, a mask, or eyeglasses. The breed is renowned for its intelligence and kind temperament because it was maintained purely for hundreds of years in Siberia. It was acknowledged by the American Kennel Club in 1930 as a member of the working group and by the Fédération Cynologique Internationale, International Canine Federation, in 1966 as a member of the Spitz and Primitive Types Group, subgroup Nordic Sledge Dogs. 
The Siberian Husky is a joyful, independent, and active breed. It gets along with other dogs and animals fairly well and is gregarious with strangers. Siberians are amiable canines who do not make good guard dogs. Although the breed enjoys interacting with people of all ages, it is too independent and powerful to make a decent strolling companion for the young or elderly. It can be a stubborn dog who is difficult to train. Siberians rarely bark, but they do emit a variety of woos, chirps, and howls, making them anything but quiet. It should be noted that while these assertions are traditional and generally accepted generalizations about the breed, specific Siberian behavior may vary. Blackiston's Fish Owl Only 1,000 pairs of the elusive Blackiston's Fish Owl have been observed in the wild, making it one of the most fragile owl species in existence. This secretive species is only found in Japan and the Russian Far East. The owl was given the name Thomas Blackiston after the English naturalist who discovered the first specimen in 1883 in Hakodate, Japan's Hokkaido. This owl, along with the Eurasian eagle owl and the great gray owl, both of which are found in Siberia, is regarded to be the biggest owl in the world, weighing an average of 3 to 3.5 kilos. Huge, light brown owl with big, plump ear tufts, streamside mature boreal woods with appropriate tree cavities for breeding are home to these endangered species. Primarily preys on fish, different from the Eurasian eagle. Owl by the lack of broad lines on the breast and the broader, thicker, and not held erect ear tufts. A duo performs a deep, resonant song in a duet. The first two notes of the duet are played by a male, and the third note is played by a female. The second male note partially blends with the lower-pitched female note. When raising their young, Blackiston fish owls may hunt both throughout the day and night in addition to their primary activity hours of dusk and dawn. For owls who hunt along riverbanks, they may even trample out a regular route because they spend exceptional amounts of time on the ground. Although Blackiston's fish owls are typically solitary and fiercely territorial, when they are hungry, they may occasionally congregate close to rapids and non-freezing springs. The two most common ways Blackiston's fish owls hunt are by wading through the river shallows and perching on the bank or on logs to watch for movement in the water. An owl may wait four hours in this behavior before spotting prey. Number 7. The Siberian Chipmunk The natural range of the Siberian Chipmunk spans much of northern Asia, from central Russia to China, Korea, and Hokkaido in northern Japan. Additionally, the species can be found in Eastern Europe, primarily as a result of captive-born individuals escaping. The densely vegetated forest floor is this rodent's preferred environment. Rock outcroppings, home foundations, and other man-made structures are also excellent habitats. With the exception of the winter months, when they are frequently spotted in groups sharing in a single burrow, Siberian chipmunks are primarily solitary animals. The diurnal Siberian chipmunk sleeps at night. These rodents experience torpor during the winter. They typically stockpile food throughout the winter and only emerge from their slumber to eat every few weeks. These rodents burrow their food around 5 centimeters underground. The majority of their active time is spent cleaning their body from the back to the tail. They are highly clean creatures. This species frequently takes baths together. When threatened, they make two different vocalizations. A quick, bird-like chirping sound that lasts for 1.5 seconds and a deep croaking sound. Although its function is unknown, the latter is probably used during the mating season. Unproven speculation holds that they may also use scent and visual cues. The Siberian chipmunk, which is endemic to East Asia and is arguably the cutest creature to ever traverse Siberia, is the only species of chipmunk known to exist outside of North America. Siberian chipmunks often have five dark stripes and four white stripes along the back. They are about 18 to 25 centimeters long of which about a third is the tail, making them shorter than a typical squirrel. Number 8. Musk Deer The musk deer is one of the strangest and most valuable species of deer in the world. Musk deers have tusks, 
not horns or antlers, which are used to scare off rival males during mating season, in contrast with the other male deer. Around the world, fragrances, cosmetics, and medications frequently employ the gland from the male musk deer. They typically measure 3 feet in length and weigh 10 kilos. This species' native range spans Eastern Asia, from southern China and Burma through the Himalayas to the Arctic woodlands. The musk deer is only found in mountainous, forested areas. Usually, the animal can be located on a steep slope that faces north. This ungulate prefers rocky places for its habitat, resting and breeding. In some areas, people migrate to grass-filled, forested river valleys throughout the summer. Dusk and nighttime are when musk deer are most active. They typically exhibit less activity during times of severe rain. These timid and wary animals are often found alone or in small groups of two to three, usually consisting of a female and her young. The musk deer can travel long distances. These mammals spend the winter months living on cliff faces. They relocate to grassy meadows along river valleys of their mountain range as summer approaches. They use communal toilets, which have a distinctive odor and are used by conspecifics as a method of communication during the spring and fall seasons. Each male musk deer may have a home range of up to 300 hectares, which include feeding grounds for one to three females. Smaller, weaker males typically avoid entering another male's territory because the latter will fight to drive them out. Males also scent mark their territories to defend themselves. The origin of the musk, which has been in high demand for the past 5,000 years, is the musk deer. In 1855, some 81,200 sacks were shipped from Russia to China via the Kyakta. After a short while, Japan received as many as 100,000 sacks in a single year. Later on, the number of these animals started to decline. Only 5089 sacks were gathered in 1927 as a result. The main threat facing this species right now is still hunting for musk, which is currently utilized in cosmetics and pharmaceuticals. There is no estimate of the size and overall population for this species. According to the IUCN Red List, there are around 44,000 people living in Mongolia, 600 to 650 people are left in eastern Siberia, and 150,000 Siberian musk deer live in the Russian Far East. In Siberia's 10 federal areas, there are approximately 110,000 musk deer, according to 2011 data. Siberian musk deer are therefore categorized as vulnerable overall, and their population is steadily declining. And that's the end guys. Which one of the list attracted you the most? And what are your thoughts on the conservation of Siberian wildlife? Do you also feel that the Siberian wildlife is the most amazing and exciting wildlife to look upon? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you like our work, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.